Nepal, a developing nation, is considered as a political instable, low in human development, and a disaster-prone country. The country is highly dependent on foreign aid, especially for its governance, development, and relief programs. As a result, several international non-governmental organization, religious organization, and charity group works independently or in collaboration with government institutions or local organizations to provide resources and services, advocate social change, and improve quality of life of the people at the grassroots. In the time of emergency, such institutions also work to provide rescue and relief support to the affected communities to help them cope up with the situation. Such instances put these institutions and its workers in the position of power over the community as they hold access to resources and services. This difference in power can be misused by some of the humanitarian or aid workers to exploit or abuse the vulnerable people in the community. One of the ways that the community members can be exploited is through sexual exploitation and abuse SEA. This way, organization or aid workers which are supposed to protect communities harm them instead. Sexual exploitation and abuse is also considered as a serious misconduct and violation of fundamental rights of the beneficiaries. The humanitarian or aid organizations must follow the principle of do no harm and be committed to safeguard the community they are serving and protect and promote human rights in all conditions. Such organizations must not be tolerant to any forms of sexual exploitation and abuse. Protection from Sexual Exploitation and Abuse PSEA policy should be formed within an organization as an organizational effort to end any forms of sexual exploitation and abuse committed by their affiliates, including members, staffs, consultants, etc. PSEA policy also allows organizations to hold staff accountable in case they violate the policy they signed. There are few steps that any development or humanitarian organization must follow to form an effective PSEA policy within their organization. It is important for all the affiliates to come together and have equal contribution in developing and implementing PSEA policy within the organization. Organization leaders must also consult with stakeholders and community or beneficiaries in developing PSEA policy, including code of conduct, reporting mechanisms, etc. They should work together to identify potential risks within organizations that can contribute to SCA and work to develop a mechanism that helps to mitigate those risks. It is necessary to review international and national laws and policies related to violence and abuse and align organization PSCA policy accordingly. It is crucial to tailor organizational values, culture, and strategies and to map organization policies in order to align it with PSEA policy. PSEA must be integrated in all the working areas of the organization. PSEA policy should be based on zero tolerance towards SEA, principles of fair investigation, a survivor-centered approach, and protection of the whistleblower.